Hey folks, so I got a new laptop. Um, woo, so you'll see some color scheme differences and stuff. I'm trying the dark mode and other things. So uh, anyway, today I thought I would show you really quick uh, something that I found to be really useful in the past, um, this snippets feature. So here, I'll show you how to get there. You, you're in Chrome, you go to, uh, let's see, more tools and developer tools. And that uh, pops up in this thing. You'll probably wind up in elements. And then you've got console and sources is where we're going to be. Um, that'll probably start on page. And then you click on this. You click on snippets. And that's where we're going to be at. Um, so I have two snippets in here that I just barely put in here because I just got this new computer. Um, and so I don't have like all my other snippets. But uh, this is one that I use quite a lot. And this is one that's really useful um, that I'll talk about later. So um, yeah, the cool thing about snippets is you can write like any JS or whatever, and then you can have a function called um, say hi. And um, I got to figure out how to make that not do four spaces. Who on earth? Console.log hi, and then subject, and we'll take the subject. And then I can save that. It'll be saved in my Chrome DevTools. It's not synced, which is kind of unfortunate, but it'll be saved. Um, and then we hit command enter. We can click on that to run the snippet. And this runs in uh, just like a regular JavaScript file would when you load the page. And so um, because we're not in any sort of closure and we're not in strict mode, we're going to wind up adding this say hi method to window. So say window dot say hi, or simply say hi, because this is also not in strict mode here. Um, and we can say uh, say hi to Mary, and it'll console log. Hi, Mary. Uh, so that's cool. That gives you a lot of power. And so you can, um, if you have a website that's doing something that you don't like, um, and like you can add any JavaScript that you want here. Uh, I don't think that there's a way to have a script run automatically. And so there are extensions for that uh, to have a script run automatically when you get onto a, a particular page. But this can be really useful. Um, I've used it in the past for. Um, automating like filling out a form um, on like the website that I was working on. Um, today I might try to automate that through Cypress and just use Cypress as my development uh, tool, but I haven't had, still haven't had a chance to really do that. But um, but yeah, this could like you just um, fill out a, a form, hit submit, whatever you log in. Uh, this is all local on your machine, so you could put passwords on here. I guess uh, that might not be safe, but um, I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me show you the speed up one. This one's pretty cool. So if I go to uh, three minutes with Kent, my um, daily week daily podcast where I'm answering questions from my AMA, um, all of these are playing at normal rate. And that's great, except I don't like listening to anything at the normal speed. So I have this speed up uh, snippet that I can just open this up. And what this is going to do is it adds a function to window that accepts a new rate. And then I create an array out of uh, query selector all of audio and video. And for each of those, I'm going to um, take that node and set the playback rate to that new rate. So this will work for audio or video. I realize that there are extensions for this, but for some reason, those weren't working for me very well. And besides, I just want to set all of the audio and video uh, things on the page. Um, to this new rate. So, uh, and also I think we might not need this array from thing. I think modern browsers have for each on uh, document or node list. So you might try that. Um, but then I automatically have it uh, do speed up of three because um, that's probably what I'm gonna want it to, to be. And if I don't want it to be sped up that fast, then I can do speed up of whatever I want and that'll set the new rate. So then I can hit play and it's going a lot faster. Here you can actually, you can't hear it, but you can watch how fast this is. I could go speed up of 10. Ah, now it's going nuts. And then I could do like 0.5. Pretty slow. Okay, I'm gonna pause that. So um, then there's this break on access one. I actually was trying to like create a little demo of, of this and I, um, I don't have enough time to really figure it out. So you can um, look this up. This is from Paul Irish. Um, break on access. It's pretty cool. It allows uh, basically um, allows you to um, 
say, hey, the document cookie prop or property is getting updated and I don't know why, or document body scroll top is getting read and I don't know what, who's reading that property. So um, like I, I want to know when that property is being read. So um, you can execute this um, and then your debugger will get hit whenever that property is being read or written to um, if you just leave this all by itself. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it actually, you know what? I think I'm, I might know what the problem was. So let me try this. And if it doesn't work, then I'm sorry. So we're gonna say var x equals um, a, b, and then I'll say, um, uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, control access. There we go. See, I was doing this before. Um, break on um, x, a, and if I do x dot a, I don't get anything, but if I say x dot a equals hello, then I'm gonna get a debugger. So by default, it only will break for writes. Um, you have to configure it to break for reads as well. Um, but yeah, so I get a debugger statement in here and then I have my call stack and I can go back up the call stack. Um, mine is very small because I just executed it here, but you can um, imagine this could be really useful, especially if you're dealing with um, some of these elements, you're like, okay, so something is changing. Uh, here, let's see, inspect that thing. Okay, so something is changing this class and I'm not sure what it is. So what I'm gonna do is we have this dollar zero right here. I'm gonna say break on dollar zero and the property name is class name. And now if I go, whoop, ah oh man, maybe it's class list. Try that again. Nope. Hmm. I'm actually not sure. Okay, so there's actually a better way to do this one in particular, and that is um, there is a break on feature where we can say attribute modifications and then pff, and what? Oh, it might be because this is in a Chrome extension. Okay, well, anyway, you can explore that a little bit. That's a really, really cool feature. I'm not sure what the problem is there, but yeah, DOM breakpoints. You also have XHR fetch breakpoints, um, which are pretty cool. You can add one of those and say, hey, whenever a URL contains a certain um, um, string, then I want you to break on the JavaScript that is making that fetch, and then you can go backwards. That's like super, super helpful. Um, yeah, but I'm not gonna show that today. So. That's it for today. Um, I kind of showed you a couple of things. Snippets are awesome. Uh, there is this website um, right there. Brigands uh, or Big Grins, Big Grins. Yeah, DevTool snippets. Pretty cool. Um, lots and lots of snippets. Uh, this has been around for a long time. So some of the snippets um, might actually be supported built into Chrome now, kind of like the break on DOM uh, manipulations and stuff. But take a look at this. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, idea here. Let's just for funsies. I'll just copy this. Whoop. And we'll paste it in our dev tool. Or yeah, I'll just do new all colors.js. Paste that. Hit enter. And boom. All the colors on the page are printed out here. And it shows me where. That's kind of cool. All right. So I'm gonna jump out. Um, actually, let me double check. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, that's it. So I will see you all later. I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, yeah, peace. Ah, I clicked on the wrong one. Peace.